Hey there, my name's Tom Hall. I'm part of the Blue Root team, and I'm here to show you Zoho Expense. In this video, I'm just gonna walk you through the basics as if you open up a brand new account, and what do each of the different tabs mean? So let's get started right away. So on my screen here, let me just minimize myself. This is a brand new version of Zoho Expense. So coming in here, you might not know where to start. Let me walk you through it. So to start on the left-hand side here, this is kind of your navigation pane. So each one of these things is a place you can go and do a different activity. Here is kind of your dashboard. It kind of quick links to the different activities that I'll show you. And also it shows you a little bit of analytics right here. So things about the expenses that you're submitting. You can always go into the top right here. This little bell will be notifications for you. So if you're an approver and you have a, a report to approve, and I'll show you what that means in just a second, it'll appear here. Settings, if I click it just real quick, you can see how I can define things about my organization, users and set preferences, as well as configure integrations, but that's a bit further down the line. Then as always, you can have help and support from Zoho by hitting this question. And then information about myself can be found by clicking right here. So that's the general overview of the structure that you'll see when you log in. But I wanna spend a bit time for each of the things on the left-hand side. So let's get into it. The first one you're gonna see is this receipt inbox. The idea of a receipt is what it sounds like. It's all places where you can put all receipts. And there's two ways you can do this, two primary ways you can do this, at least from the desktop perspective. One, you can click, and this will upload it from either your computer or the cloud, as you can see here, or you can set up an inbox so you can forward your receipts to here. So you can see here, it says send your receipts to this email here. And what that basically means is that if I send an email to this address with my receipt attached, it will automatically come into my receipt inbox. One cool thing you can do is you can click and you can update your forwarding address. You can see my actual email is quite long, but I prefer just to say John, and then I can hit save. And now my email will be updated. And so now it's a bit simpler of an email that I can use to forward to myself. The difference between a receipt and expense, if you're looking ahead, is a receipt is just that. It's just the receipt, just a picture or whatever it is of the physical receipt. An expense is when you take that receipt and you attach it to the details about it. So where the receipt was received, um, where you're gonna charge it to, whether to a, it's to a client or whatever else. So an expense adds all the details around that receipt. So let's get into it now. So I click expenses, and if you're ever confused, you can see that they have a little report here. So, you know, it has say, okay, this is how you can add your expenses, either from a receipt manually or from a credit card transaction, goes into report and then goes for approval. So I'm gonna do the manual way right now. There are other ways, best done from the mobile device that we'll cover in other videos. But for this one here, we're gonna do it the manual way. So you can hit create expense, and then what comes up is this screen here. And you can see there's a number of things that you need to fill out, but the mandatory ones are in red. So let's, I'm gonna focus on those. So first off a merchant, you can see since it's a new account, I don't have any, but maybe I wanna put one in and maybe I ate at Subway. I can just simply type it in. And now Subway has actually become a merchant of mine once I hit save and they'll be available to be used in the future. Category, I can choose where this is. So meals and entertainment. I can also itemize my receipt if I need to. So I can say, this much was associated with meals and entertainment. And then I can add another line and say this much the re receipt was associated with office supplies, as an example. For this one, we're just gonna say it's a, a single expense, we'll keep it here. The last one is an amount. So let's say it was $50 that I spent at Subway. And then for any of these, these are optional at this moment at least. So I can have the option to add a description, what it sounds like a reference number. This is for you internally, if you need to have a reference and then add to report. You will have to add it to report, but what's optional is whether you do it now or whether you do it later. So I'll keep it blank for now. And then actually adding that receipt, I can click here. Once again, I could upload as I could from my receipts, or I can choose a receipt I've already uploaded. I can say from existing, there's none right now, but if there were some, they would appear here and I could add it to the expense. And then all you have to do is hit save. And that's how you had an expense. 
Continuing through, the next thing is a report. So what a report is, is you can see once along the bottom here, it says add your expenses to report and submit it for approval. So this is how you go through the process of actually getting approval for your reports. Now, this can happen automatically and we sh can show you that feature later. But for now, I'll show you the manual way to create a report. So once again, just like a receipt, I'm just going to click that big green button there that says create report. So I click this. I add a report name, so I'm just going to call this report number one. And then I can add whatever I'd like. I can add my un, it automatically sees that expense that I created there, so I'll include that. Or I can do a new expense and I can do one on the fly if I had one there. I don't have one on the fly, so I won't do that. So I'll just hit, I can either hit save, which just saves this for later. Or what I'm going to do in this case, I'm going to hit save and submit. So submitting it for approval. And so there you go. And then it's just going to ask you, who do I want to approve it? I'm the only person in this company, so it's going to be myself as John. But um, I can send it here and say, I want John to approve it. Um, it's giving me an error because I haven't verified this email. But if it was verified, I'd be able to send that to John for him to approve it. So right now, it's just going to stay as saved. I can always come back later and hit su submit and send that to John. So continuing through, I'm going to go through the next parts a bit quicker now. Cards, this is basically, you can add a company card. So what that means is that each line item that you submit or you spend on that company card can come in as an expense. It's pretty cool. Advanced payments, this is the ability to prepay someone. So um, I pay them ahead of time in advance, as the name suggests, and you can record that here. Here is where if you're an approver, it will appear. So if someone submitted to John and now I come in as John, I can see everything that I need to approve right here. And then here, it's kind of some of the cooler stuff. So starting here, analytics, I can see all of the analytics. So cool things about my data that's being submitted. We'll have a full video on that. <clears throat> Admin here, so you can start getting into your users, your settings, very similar to the settings area that we talked about up here, but it's also appearing down here. And then finally, similar to what was up in the top right corner with this question mark, I can have an area here where I can request some help from Zoho. And then I'll just bring it back to the dashboard. So that's the very, very quick overview of it. As you can see here, some of my data is already coming in, which is pretty cool. In the following videos, we're going to go into much more detail of how you do each of those things. Thanks.